Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Debris. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. This was actually a really interesting episode in just the way it was structured um, in many different regards, just because of just like what the nature of this piece of Debris was. I like how we started off with like Shelby's story and just being like, once again, kind of that out of context thing, and him having that little brother like Mac or whatever. And it's like, I am your brother, like, don't say that. We don't have a sister. And it's like, oh, Kathleen, my twin, is gone. And so it's interesting, like, how Brian and Finola got mixed up in this. Because obviously, Ferris is in the know about what they're up to. But the fact of the matter is, Maddox isn't. It's like, they still got to keep him in the dark. Because in their mind, it's like, oh, he's still, like, the main antagonist in the sense that, like, we don't know what his end result is, what his end game is. Because the fact is, he wants my dad dead. It's kind of unclear why. But the fact of the matter is... They're going to meet a dude named Garcia, which we still don't know what Garcia's circumstances are. But, like, obviously he has all these scars on his face, plus his, um, his pupils are, like, pure white. So it's, he had some incident years ago uh, with a piece of debris. So he's someone that uh, Brian knows. And they had the conversation about, like, oh, you're still getting an injection. He's like, yeah, when they send them to me. So I'm assuming, because that's still something we haven't circled back to, like, what Brian's injection thing is about. I'm assuming, like, he had a run-in with a piece of debris, maybe, in the, in the grand scheme of things that maybe Finola isn't aware about, that he had to, like, take injections to kind of deal with. Maybe uh, Garcia's kind of in a similar circumstance. That does beg the question, like, if, like, if things kind of blow up with Maddox, like, will he not get the necessary medication he needs to kind of deal with what it because he's saying like yeah i get it from time to time i guess it's like they check because my thought at the time was like maybe they check his blood every once in a while because they were like yeah they found something in your blood so you're getting your injection a little early so i guess it's like maybe after a while maybe all this constant running into under the piece of debris kind of like activates something in his blood so it's like maybe he's not 100 percent sure what it is but they found something in the blood it's like all right and give him the injection now or something i don't know there's still a mystery to that but maybe garcia's in a similar circumstance but it seems like him and george go back because that ended up being an interesting ep um, conversation in the episode where it is a thing that George, um, the whole conversation comes up about like Garcia being like, do you ever regret building Orbital? Because it's like, if it wasn't for Orbital looking into the debris and stuff like that, what happened to Garcia would have never happened to Garcia. But for um, George, it's a thing of like, for him, like regret isn't like a strong enough word or something like that. Essentially, it's, and it's kind of an, it's kind of an interesting conversation in it. It's very similar to his conversation with Fanola, like saying that what this technology is and what it can do, it's like well beyond like what we can understand that obviously it's, um, something that can change the world in an instant. So it's a thing of like, yes, there's a drawback. There's danger with getting involved in it, not fully understanding it. Sure. But it's kind of like the good outweighs all the risks that are involved. Almost kind of making it seem like, Hey, Garcia, you ended up in this situation because you on some level knew the risk. Yeah. It sucks what happens to you, but Garcia is almost looking like that's not even an apology. It's just kind of like, that was going to, but once again, it's kind of similar. Like he wasn't really, he apologized a little bit to Finola last episode about like, not really being there for her, but it was also the thing of, yeah, but what's happening in this work is too important. It was kind of almost a similar conversation in that regard. That because basically he started orbital, but then like the higher ups kind of the kind of the powers that be kind of took up from him. So they kind of rushed into a lot of situations before they fully understood. There were I guess there were a lot of protocols that weren't in place yet about how um a lot of uh protocols in place to protect them to kind of make sure like okay we need to understand the debris before we really go rushing in to be fair that's kind of come up a little bit before like brian's number one thing is like yeah don't rush into a um actually be the second person that rushes in after the uh, piece of debris is found because like let that first person suffer the ramifications and be like yeah okay so we just don't do that what that person did it's like brian's kind of had that perspective in a different episode i think it was like a scientist he was talking to about that um also, maybe that had come up before, but, like, the devices they use to kind of track, like, pieces of debris, like, the power levels and stuff like that, are called Ligaris. I didn't know that before, and it's like, oh, like, the Ligari files, like, I, I, I guess whoever this guy is, is he's the one, like, a lot of this technology and stuff stems from, maybe he's the one next to George that has the most extensive understanding of the debris or something like that. Well, cause I, I think he's the one that they talked about last episode that's like, oh yeah, like he had like a stroke or something like that. So maybe he's like an OG orbital person, much like um, 
George, but, um, once again, this episode was so interesting because, like, Brian and, you know, Finola are working this case, uh, that ended up being Shelby's case, just because they, um, have to keep up appearances and everything, and they, uh, end up, you know, running into the kid, and the kid knows exactly who they are, he's like, yeah, I've also been talking to your dad, George, and he's like, wait, what? Yeah, we've had this conversation before, multiple occasions, basically, the piece of debris he touches has basically let him time travel back two days, but George kind of tells him it's not really time travel, because somehow, in some shape or form, Shelby has basically wiped his twin sister Kathleen out of existence, he's like, the, the, the device doesn't let you go back more than, it hasn't let us go back more than two days, so, like, how did I wipe out my sister from, like, 20 years of existence, like, how did that happen, that, and I thought it was so interesting that basically George's explanation is, it's kind of like time travel, but it's more like, imagine, like, um, reality is like a large card, um, a deck of cards, and that basically he's shifting reality and pulling cards out of it every time he's quote-unquote time traveling and every time he comes back things are a little different uh sometimes he's alone uh sometimes he has one brother but then another time he'll have a different brother but the fact of the matter is the one constant is that he never has Kathleen nothing nothing he does can bring Kathleen back so it's him saying like yeah George suggested I do this but every time Finola's like talking to her dad and dad George is like yeah I don't know why I would tell him to keep trying so begs the question was there a circumstance where George suggested to him try try again but like every other subsequent time we've been a part of that conversation George has been like I don't know why I would ever tell him to do it again because him calls him doing this over and over again it's causing the space time continuum to break down but then he's kind of cuz he was lying to Finola and um Brian by being like hey like by um not fixing this I'm called it's causing t like me doing this over and over again it's the only means of fixing everything it's very similar to like and this is me type pulling from other stuff but it's like it's the only thing I can think of that like really kind of be an apt comparison it's like flashpoint on the flash obviously this you know I, this applies to both the storyline and stuff like that but obviously I'm going to specific reference the TV version where basically Barry created flashpoint he tried to undo it the timeline didn't revert the way he wanted it to so he decided to try again but Jay was like no because every time you like yes the timeline is basically like a cup when you time travel you break it and crack it you can put it back and it will not never be quite the same but every time you're time traveling you're cracking it more and more and that there is a very apt metaphor for this particular occasion it's like every time Shelby does this he's cracking and breaking the space time continuum more and more trying to get it back to the original form but it's like maybe he can never get it back to the original form that seems like to kind of be like the through line of the whole message of the episode to a certain extent because it ends up being George talks about the fact is that it's more so like it's not really like a time travel thing it is it is but it's like basically shifting reality to represent your desires he's like no why would I want to get rid of my sister it's like that's the thing about desires you think you want something but you never really know because at your core like what you really want and it turns out like yeah he him and his sister like you know being a twin and everything like a, there's a part of him that like wanted her to never have been born you know just on some small level and now like that ended up being the core to everything and now it's like because of this small desire and now it's like a thing of like I do anything to get her back I want her back now that's not how I'm feeling right now this moment of feeling like you want to only be the only one now he can't undo it and obviously, every time he's restarting, it's really interesting because at first, like, Brian almost runs into the deer, which I love that conversation with George being like, oh, good driver. And he's like, well, to be fair, like, you do drive a little fast for my taste. And it's like, you know, haste shows someone uh, is kind of like a representation of someone disorganized. He's like, I'll keep that in mind, George. Thank you. Um, but we see that a different timeline it ended up, or another reality, they, it's like, oh, Finola points out the deer. It's like, oh my God, look, there's that deer. So they're showing you subtle differences. And then we see it like every time Shelby's restarting him. Because I guess that's a conversation that George has with Finola. That conversation never gets had in front of Shelby. Or either it does and he's aware of it, but he's avoiding it. It's like, okay, I don't tell you guys that you told me not to. So I'm, every time I'm getting more and more information from George about like how, what I should try different, like what I should keep in mind, obviously the whole thing about the colors and everything. So either, it's hard to say whether he was a part of the conversation where he was like, oh, you guys don't want me to do it. Because I guess maybe he's going by the fact is maybe there was one version of George that was like, 
do it again and he just kept doing it subsequently every time or maybe just because to avoid like having to like deal with it he just avoided that like oh confrontation of like them being like yeah my dad said stop doing this but you're doing it anyway you know it, it's hard to say in that point but every time he kept restarting it it created a very different circumstances because like at one point, you know, Brian shows up with a different agent on multiple occasions. It's never like the same agent twice. It was like a different agent sometimes. So that in itself gets your brain like thinking like it big brain science, science fiction mode kicks in. You're like, so what was so different in this timeline? It's like the fact is that, once again, it's not like a full-blown time travel of, like, you are shifting reality. Once again, he's pulling cards out of, like, the deck that is reality. And it's causing massive ripples across, like, reality. Because it's, like, it's affecting not just Shelby's life. But to be fair, that's, like, that's the number one of time travel. Like, it's a ripple effect. It, you never know how big the effect is. Like, he's just trying to start, change stuff in his own life. And maybe that in itself... Well, because at first, Brian never kept going in. It was just Shelby. And so that shifts things very interestingly enough. Like I said, each time he's with a different agent. But it's also implying like, oh, George isn't a, quote unquote alive in his timeline. But it's like, maybe he is, but just things never played out because he never meets up with Finola. And because he never meets up with Finola, it never leads to a time where it's like they find out that George is actually alive and being worked with, uh, that's work, quote, being forced to work with Influx. Or so that's one possibility, or maybe the possibility is that he actually is dead in that reality and they never resurrected him or were never able to. Maybe they never found the piece of debris. Like, there's so many different damn possibilities. It's time travel, it's branching timelines and realities and stuff like that. There's so much to that. Like, the episode doesn't go into it, but man, like I said, it sends that big brain science fiction side of my brain into overdrive. Like, what the possibilities could be for it to be that? That's because it's the thing of like so. So many of those alternate realities, Brian didn't have Finola. There was like like half a dozen. And that's just the ones we saw. We have no idea how long it took for it to finally shift back into a reality where him and Finola and George are all there. And, you know, that we're getting back. Because that when we finally get back to Finola, who's to say that that's even the original reality anymore? I mean, his sister Kathleen's still not back. But who's to say what's different in that reality? And that's what I'm saying. This episode sends me in an overdrive because it's like a lot of these conversations that are had, it's like things played out differently. And because like I'm assuming when they're showing stuff like between Garcia and um, if Garcia and George, because even that opening scene, like either that was just them showing us more of it when we're in the, like Garcia's garage and everything, or that's supposed to represent like, hey, like this situation look because like when they originally left George, like, hey, we got a like a job, you're going to be safe here. Finola and her dad had that conversation outside. The next time they had that conversation, it's inside the garage. So I'm like, dude, I, I'm, I'm tripping out here. You might be like, oh, I'm ranting or something like that. I hate when people just say I'm ranting. I'm like getting frantic about it because I think it's so freaking sick because this is my jam, dude. This is one of those things where I'm like, this is why I love science fiction because of crazy shit like this, dude. Just like that, the limitless possibilities of what that represents and what that could be because we don't know what conversations are still true to this reality anymore, you know? And it's just like, oh my God, that's sick and that's crazy. And it's just like, like I said, it just sends my brain in an overdrive. And yet, it might be me ranting. I'm just like, no, I'm not ranting. I'm just talking about this so excitedly, you know? Um, that's my point I'm trying to make. The fact is that, like, you know, even that conversation with Maddox and his wife, we saw one version of that. Who knows if that's even... Uh, that, you'd assume they're showing you those versions because those are parts of those stories that they're trying to keep connected. Or maybe they're, maybe they're just trying to show you storylines of, like, hey... These are some storylines, but that doesn't necessarily mean they'll stick around. I feel like they're, they're showing you them, so they have to. So eventually, when this all get reversed, these particular storylines, like I said, George and Garcia, those conversations, as well as Maddox has with his wife, Julia, like, maybe that they'll stay intact. Because basically, he ends up finding out his wife is secretly trying to divorce him. Because he is in a position where he's trying to make sure like everything is okay. It's like, okay, I'm trying to make this marriage work. We can wait, we can make a way, way forward. Like plenty of families go through something terrible and they're able to find a way forward for her. It's like, I'm the reason why everything happened. I can't take your forgiveness. I like, she's like, I think for her, it's like, honestly, it's easier for you to blame me. You like taking like this higher route of like forgiving me your forgiveness. I think that's a complicated thing of like forgiveness can be kind of like, 
um, a prison in its own right because it's like for her it makes her feel even more guilty of like you not just being pissed at me wanting nothing to do with me you not blaming me I'm already blaming myself and you blame not blaming me makes me just like regret it even more of like I can't stick around like the fact is you know your forgiveness is like too much which is like you know and I, I think I can understand the rationale behind that because it can, can seem like oh shouldn't you want forgiveness but it's like when you're when you're so guilt feeling so guilty about something like that you want to kind of drown in your guilt um someone forgiving you I guess it's almost its own pain in its own it, it, it was it was just an interesting thing because once again we're touching on it little by little about Maddox's personal life but regardless it's really interesting so I want see what I mean like we got that conversation one time so it's like any other subsequent time when Brian was um with a different person that wasn't Finola who's to say that conversation still happened that things played out that same way who knows what else was different in Maddox's life like once again, you don't know the ripple effects because once again, this isn't just basic time travel. This is shifting entire realities and now it's a situation where the realities are bleeding through to the point he's setting up all these mirrors and he's able to see his sister Kathleen but that's a representation of a reality that's because now we're also now you also have to get into the thought of well are well are we dealing with a multiverse type of situation where all these realities are coexisting at the same time are they stacking on top of each other and bleeding through or is it just a situation that they're so close to each other that they're basically like there's a thin layer of of space time and continuum between each one that they're basically like layers to a cake you know that's the big question of like are they like thin layers of a cake and all these realities are that close to stacking onto each other that they're able to bleed through i mean is that what natural a multiverse naturally is are the lanes between um multiple like realities always that thin like you know it's just it's just inconceivable i mean because we always already had that conversation about like the different like dimensions that actually exist you know earlier in the season where george was like yeah there's multiple dimensions that are such thin layers from each other we just can't perceive them but they're basically it's not just the third and fourth dimension that well, i even forgot the number but there was like a like a handful of dimensions that kind of coexist we kind of dealt with that with a past piece of debris this is like taking that to the oomph level i think you know because uh, there's already all these dimensions right here so it's like what does that mean for like uh the alternate realities in like that are parallel i mean hell are they even parallel or they perpendicular like once again big brain science fiction shit it just like gets your mind racing at a thousand miles per hour being like there's a lot of stuff they don't explain because i guess it's up to you to just kind of fill in the, the science fiction of like you know taking what you know from other stuff to be like oh maybe it applies to this or maybe it doesn't because different things take different aspects of science fiction because like what might apply in one particular like show of how they use science fiction might get contradicted in this because they might not follow the same thought process or the same framing device of like I'm like I said I'm going like sporadic and spastic about it but it's just like it's such a sick thing to me because it's such a crazy episode because first and foremost it's a it's a two-parter I'm like because I was getting near the episode in the episode I'm like how do you resolve all this with like a couple minutes and then I remember seeing the title for the next episode because this episode has something to do with Icarus which is very apt you know description but it's like the next episode is called like I think it's like I am Icarus or something like that so it's like I remembered that as it was the episode was coming close to an end so I was like right this is a two-parter which has never happened so far in the show usually these cases are one and done yes there's kind of like conversations and developments that carry over between like Brian and Fenola like don't want a more personal level but the cases rarely have ever like carried over into a new part like this is oh so that's what presents and makes this so interesting but also, this final time, like, Brian went with uh, Shelby, so he remembers, you know, and once again, that's the interesting thing, too, like, you don't, it's not like you have two sets of memories, the only memories you have are yours, because Brian's uh, partner, she's like, dude, we've been partners for, like, five years, he's like, I don't know you. Like, it's just for him, it's like all he remembers is going with Shelby into the, the piece of debris and like, boom, I'm back in the car. I'm with a complete stranger. And it's like the difference is Brian just didn't remember it before. But now it's like for him, it's like I'm a and that's also the thing, too, where he's like, I'm not the Brian from this reality. I'm from a different reality, which isn't to say that the this Brian is the Brian from the original reality. I mean, the question is, what is even the original reality anymore? Because by the time Brian and them got like put on this case, 
Shelby's already interacted with them multiple times, so reality had shifted already so many damn times. So it's like, this isn't Brian version one anymore. By the time we got to that point where we as the audience got to see Finola, Brian, and George kind of interact with him for the first time, that could have been version seven for them. And who knows what version of Finola it is because, like, obviously, like, well, she exists in every continuity. It's just that she's not partnered up with Brian just because things work differently in every reality. Just things have played out differently. Like, in this particular reality, it's like, oh, I've been partnered with this person for the past five years. That's an interesting thing considering him and Finola didn't, they weren't together for, like, five years. They were only together for the past, like, what, couple months at most. So it's like showing you huge shifts in a lot of things. It's just like, dude. And now it's like, I don't, he sounds crazy to his partner. You know, it's like, because Shelby was like, I did exactly what he wanted. I want my sister back. I love my sister. And now for Brian, it's like, I know I'm not supposed to be here. Realities are bleeding through. He actually calls up Fanola, who's working in London, you know, so they're not like, she's not a part of this project. She never got tackled with this whole like orbital thing. Like, um, I'd assume she knows about it because that's also a conversation she had earlier in the episode where like on some level she blamed Maddox and stuff like that, that like basically she had to watch her father's entire life's work just kind of be taken, you know, she had never really shown that resentment until now because now it has the context of, oh, Maddox wants my dad dead, my dad, you know being resurrected and everything like it adds different context to everything so she was already feeling a certain way and now this just adds more to it but um on top of all this there's a story being told about you know the penguin and the soldier you know the um the story of like someone constantly helping and guiding others not having desires of your own but basically it's like okay the reason why you don't desire anything is because you're afraid that like if you let in a little desire if you want anything at all you're afraid of it being taken from you because at the very least if you don't desire anything you're not going to have anything that you could potentially lose so it's kind of like protecting yourself it's like isolating yourself so you never have to have worry about your heart being broken it's kind of like something in that vein so basically the, the this tell of the story is like no matter how many lifetimes you go through and stuff like that basically kind of like the thing of like you can never always get back to what you want because brian it's like i'm trying to get back to someone very important to me and finola was like who is the person if you don't mind me asking you're trying to get back to and he was like you and it's like that's so sweet that like he's so desperate to get back to her because she is so important to him because for the he had talked about it at the beginning of the series she made him feel human again he had cut that self out part of himself out for so long because it was part of his job being around finola made him human again that's why he felt guilty about keeping the secret about her dad like like, he connected with her with something, like, he hasn't connected with people, because it almost, because it almost begs the question, like, are any of his relationships real, like, even his, yeah, he owes Maddox, and they have their history and stuff like that, but his relationship with Maddox is kind of of a different nature than his was with Finola, like, that's why he's willing to go along with Finola, why he, like, willing to turn against everything he knew for Finola, because she is important to him, um, maybe it correlates in some shape or form to that story of Brian's that we still don't know about, about that picture and everything. Cause the, cause the conversation came up earlier in the show too, about like, you know, um, it made it seem like what I, I forgot. It was like the first or second case. Um, it was the first case about, you know, the mom who was grieving her child and the debris manifested itself like that and kept like taking more and more people to basically energize itself. So, like, it was about kind of letting go, and Brian kind of connected with the daughter about kind of that whole process, and I'm like, it made me think, like, maybe he had lost someone important to him, we hadn't really ever dived into it, and then we also, like, was it the next episode, we or, yeah, I want to say it was episode two, we found out about the picture because he, you know, because of the clone, Brian, and everything, so... Now, uh, his partner is talking to Maddox about, like, yeah, Brian's crazy, acting crazy. I think he's being affected by the debris. He wants to use it again. And Maddox is like, don't let him use it again by whatever means, which we've seen what that whatever means. So it's like, oh, you're almost telling his partner, like, if you have to put him down, put him down. So it's like, okay, so does he know about this piece of debris and that, or is it just kind of a thing of we can't take the chance of people keep using this and we don't know? So, like, dude. A hell of a way to end this episode, dude. Like I said, it's like, it's so interesting. Like, once again, 
it just sends my brain spiraling in so many different directions about like how this works. And it's because it's still not even clear cut. All we know, it's based around desires and stuff like that. But we don't know the implications of what this means, because that means even if Brian restores everything, gets back to the reality that he like, oh, it's like he's partner for Finola. That doesn't mean everything's going to be copacetic because that never means they're going back to version one. We're in a whole new version where things because like, OK, Brian will remember what reality he came from, but even that reality will be potentially different. It's almost like an MCU thing of like, oh, we've been living in an alternate reality the entire time. There's always been two Captain Americas type of stuff. It's just like, oh, God, because that's also another thing, too. It's not like multiple versions of these people exist in the same reality because Brian's replacing the Brian that should exist in that reality. Who's lived this entire life. He's just kind of like hijacked his place, which begs the question. Did that Brian from that universe, that reality, just disappear, pop out of existence because they can't exist at the same time because it create this giant space-time continuum paradox that would basically unravel everything anyway? See what I mean? It gets my mind racing, and I think that's so exciting. Like I said, this is that this is that geeky, like science fiction type of stuff I love because because like I said, we just don't know the full extent of everything. But like I said, even if Brian fixes everything and gets reality back close enough, he's still probably going to notice some differences in it. Like, not less we can go back to version 1.0, but once again, what is 1.0? And obviously, as long as Shelby's doing this, they, you know, it's going to get to that point where Brian's going to have to constantly keep going and going like Shelby every time Shelby's trying to do it and he's who knows how many times in totality he's done it and it's been unsuccessful so brian's there's probably no there's no guarantee that brian's going to get back to a reality that's exactly like his uh because obviously like he's slipping further away from like like because we've only seen so far two realities where he was like still working with Finola that we saw once again we don't know how many versions of Brian Finola Shelby interacted with beforehand because he had ran into them a couple of times and even then Brian showing up with a different partner like okay that's new so that hadn't happened before so we at least saw two versions you know there was the the initial version and then there was like the second version and then there was like the third version that came like a couple shifts later so there was at least three versions of Brian and Finola that we've kind of come to know, like at least three versions of them. Like I'm, I'm, I'm getting so confusing with this. I, I you know, I, I'm really, really interested to see where this is going to take us next episode. Next episode is going to be crazy of like, how do you fix something like that? Is there a way to fix it? Is it just a thing of, yeah, we just kind of destroy everything. And this becomes like almost like a, because I talked about it, the the, the creator of this show, J. H. Wyman, uh, he show ran. I think I think he did. A, I think he did some writing and maybe directing, but I definitely know he show ran um, Fringe. God, I, I don't want to spoil Fringe. Fringe's finale. We might be in a we might be pulling a Fringe finale type of thing. I would, I'll just leave it at that. If you've seen the series finale, some elements of that where it's just kind of like. Oh, all of this doesn't matter. It matters, but it kind of doesn't matter because it kind of got all undone. Once again, Flashpoint's a kind of a great example of it. Like, it might be kind of something similar in that vein. I'm thinking more so like Fringe's series finale. Like, that might be where this storyline ends, potentially. Uh, like I said, I'm trying not to go into specifics. Um... Uh, because I don't want to spoil Fringe, because it's a really damn good show if you've never seen it. But just just the way they handle the final season and the, how the series finale, what the series finale basically means for the final season, for a good chunk of that story, is kind of what I'm getting at. Like I said, if you've seen Fringe, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, hopefully, I'm um, being n vague enough where I'm not spoiling things, but I'm being clear enough that it's like, okay, if you've seen it, you know what I'm trying to say, so... We will have to wait and see where all this goes. I do apologize that, like, if I come off like I'm trying to, I was ranty or anything like that. I'm wasn't ranty. I don't consider that being ranty. I consider that just me being like, dude, super like into this. But sometimes when I get super excited like that, as cracky as some people will say, because I get so like excited and talk fast sometimes when people are like, oh, like slow the fuck down, dude, you're on crack or something like that. I've had that come up a couple times, comments wise and stuff like that. So people, will, some people just say like, oh, oh my God, he's ranting. It's like, I don't think I'm ranting. I just get so excited. It's regardless, it's a tangent and all that I'm going into. 
I'm excited for the next episode to see where it takes us with all of this. I don't know how many episodes are in this season. I think there's an episode beyond. I don't think next week's episode's a season finale. I don't think. I was watching it live, but then, like, my TV kind of crapped out. So I ended up having to, like, finish it later. So I didn't even get to see what the preview for the next episode is. So I don't think it's the season finale. I will look into it and correct myself. I think there's something beyond episode 10. There might be, like, 13 episodes. There might be more. I, I didn't look at the full list on, like, IMDb. Sometimes they'll have all the episodes, like... At the very least, like, how many episodes will be in this season? Not always, sometimes, but uh, any information, I'll include it in the comments down below about, like, how many episodes are left in this season. Like I said, I don't think next week's episode is the season finale, but I could be mistaken. I, I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure, but once again, any corrections, I will include in the, like I said, comments. But, um, yeah, that's really all I want to talk about. To the, to the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and good